we want to switch gears now and get some insight into the latest news from the Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Buildings, Matthew Baudet. The first Native American Chicago City Commissioner, Baudet has been on the job for more than two years and is the son of a union electrician and joins us now. Commissioner, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Commissioner, let's start with that family background I just mentioned and how it has helped you shape your relationship with IBEW Local 134 and Electrical Contractors Association to this day. Oh, thank you for that question. I always said that that's a generational blessing to me, not just to me, but to, to my entire family. Uh, my father never graduated high school. He uh, enlisted to go fight in World War II, came back, did what everybody else does, has a family. So it's uh, him, my mom, and six of us in a two-bedroom apartment over in California in Logan. He was working three pretty basic dead-end jobs, uh, coming home, beat, and then one day he got into the 134 apprenticeship program, and that changed, changed everything. It was a complete game changer. As I say, it's a, I call it a generational blessing. Not only changed his life, my life, uh, but, but the kids. And to think for, in just one generation, my dad going from a 134 apprentice to his son being the building commissioner is amazing. It's something that I, I thank God for every day, and it's something that guides me my entire, uh, not only just my entire career, but as my, especially as building commissioner. So what are some of the new code requirements that contractors need to be aware of in 2023? It's really, uh, it's a continuation. So as you know, in 2017, we started the code modernization program. So our codes were, decades old. Our, our actual main building code was literally 70 years old. You can imagine the technology, the materials, the new processes, the best practices, seven decades worth of that were not in our code. Our code was very restrictive. It was a, you know, thou shall use X and X only. And if you wanted to use Y, it was a costly and time, timely process. You'd have to get, either go to the board of standards and reviews, or you would have to get a, a variance with, the, if you even knew to get a variance. And it was just uh, it was very cost, costly and, and timely. So it was very important for us to move forward with, with the new code. And um, you know I have to give credit where credit is due. Our first code that we updated was the electrical code. And we did that because we, went, we knew we had the relationship with, with Local 134. Um, when I was named commissioner, Don Finn was actually the first person I, I met with. Um, just you know to honor the, that relationship uh, with my father and the union, and the first in-person speech I gave to was to the ECA. Again, it was um, very important to, to me that uh, I honor that relationship. But going back to the code modernization, we started with the electrical code because we knew that we had buy-in. Where it failed in the past was that they tried to do everything at once, so you can't do every code at once. So, uh, and the other was that they didn't, they didn't talk to anybody. So what we did, we broke it down into little pieces so we were able to manage it, and we involved all the stakeholders. So when we did the electrical code, we re reconstituted the electrical commission after a long hiatus. 134 was there with our partners, ECA, as well as the other stakeholders, and we got it done. We not only got it done, we got it done quickly. We implemented it seamlessly. There was no issues with it at all. And what that did, that partnership with 134 and ECA and the other stakeholders proved to all the other trades and the, all the other industries that this can be done. How has the shift towards electrification and renewables affected the Building Commission's work? That's going to be um, a very, very important role. And uh, I've spoken to the industry about this. We just passed the Energy Transformation Code um, in 2022. And what that does is it knows that it, it shows that we have to have a greater emphasis on electrification. So as some examples, all low-rise, low rise, um, Commercial buildings now, the roofs all have to be built um, to hold uh, solar power. So they don't have to have solar power yet, but they also have to be built to have solar power. Uh, new construction, uh, be it a single family home or, or a small business, any new construction now, even if, if they choose to use um, fossil fuel appliances, have to be wired for electrical because we know that that's the future. Recently passed, is the new Chicago Energy Transformation Code. Share with our viewers a high-level explanation of that code and its intent. So again, that's moving towards electrification. So we know as a society, we need to move away from fossil fuels. We need to be more um, energy efficient 
and uh, not just efficiency, it's really transformation. So that's why it's not called energy efficiency code anymore, it's energy transformation code, because we're changing the mindset. We're changing the mindset, doesn't, this isn't just to you know, recycle a few cans and, and do a little bit for the planet. This is really changing the, the game for the planet. And again, not just for, for ourselves, but we're thinking, you know, you're a father, I'm a father, maybe we'll be grandparents one day. We need to make sure that the, the planet is there, there for them. And we, we know we can't continue the way we have been, uh, where our parents and grandparents may have, have gone. We need to change, uh, and this changes it. It doesn't mandate that you move to electric, your electrical appliances, but it mandates that if you're gonna build something new, you better have that ready to go, um, the infrastructure built in for it to be electrified. What are some of the key takeaways we in the construction industry can expect from the new code? The key takeaways, again, it's gonna be a lot easier. So what the new code does, be it the energy efficiency code or the accessibility code or the electrical code, or the main building code or some of the codes that are coming down the line. It's flexibility and it's options. And that's what everybody is, is asked for. And, and the, the trades and the contractors, the industry, homeowners, end users, uh, building business owners, they just want flexibility. And they want to be able to take, take the code. Uh, it's not a cookie cutter. You know, I think we've moved away from the idea that you, know, you can build What's built in Lakeview has to be re replicated in Englewood. Um, you don't need a McMansion in every neighborhood and you don't need to build a code that is a, a McMansion. You need to build a code that's flexible. You need to be, have, have a code that uh, works in all 77 communities, that is an economic investment, but also allows them to maintain their houses because we saw what happens when housing stock and business commercial stock uh, is not maintained because it might be too costly because the code is too cost prohibitive to even maintain a building. So we want to be able to have a code that works for everybody. When should we expect the code to go into effect and is it applicable to renovation work? Having the code being a, a living, flexible document gives us that competitive advantage that we didn't have before with some of the other cities. Where they were willing to make changes, they had flexibility. You know, when people come and talk to us, we can tell them that, but if they're just reading a code out in, on other end of the coast and not engaging with us, they're just gonna see, oh, okay, this document is gonna be a little bit too, too much for us, and so we're not even gonna look at Chicago. So we've changed that. So now, uh, you know, with the new codes, we're on the same competitive level, actually a little bit better than some of the other ones. Uh, the energy code is a great example because we were the first big city to implement the energy code. And we didn't do it just do it because it was the right thing to do. Uh, we also knew that the first city to implement it, that's what FEMA and some of the other federal agencies look, look to when they're awarding money. So by us being the first big city to do that with Mayor Lightfoot, she has now put us first in line to get that billion dollar infrastructure reduction act funds. Not just that, but homeowner rebates, a lot of other things that, um, you know, being moving forward with, with the new codes, that benefits our, our citizens and our businesses. What is the most significant thing contractors, developers, and project managers need to understand about how your building department conducts its business? The most important thing is to know that we're partners now, all of this. None of us can do this by ourselves. We've proven that um, time and time again with the code modernization programs where we would not have been able to update the codes without the involvement of, of the, the trades and the contractors and all of our stakeholders. So what I want folks to know is that we have a part, this is a partnership. This is an open dialogue. I have an open door. Um, I don't know everything. We don't know everything. I'm open to all, all great ideas. Um, constructive criticism too. I'm not afraid, afraid of that, and I welcome that, because that's how, that's how we learn. What are the challenges that you are facing as building commissioner? Several challenges, again, with, with COVID, um, with the supply chain issue, those are, those are all challenges. One challenge I think we all face on both sides, the building department and the contractors and the skilled trades, is really the labor pool. So we need to get young people 
especially women and people of color, into the trades. Uh, again, it was a generational blessing for, for my family. I can't say that enough, and that's something I do tell the young people when I, I speak to them is, you know, this isn't just a career for yourself for a couple of years. This is a, a career for life, and it's a generational change, game changer for your family. We need to push to get people into the trades. If we don't get people in the trades, we're, we're going to be in trouble. So we can have all the best codes we have, we can have all the development, but if you don't have the folks that have the skills and the dedication to, to build it and maintain it, it's not going to do us any good. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Bernie. It's been a pleasure.